Bill, how you doing there? This is Scott again. Bringing you another daily devotion, getting closer to God. Hearing God's thoughts. Hearing what God thinks about. And you want to know something? He's thinking about you. Because he loves you. All right, March 17th. Let's jump right into this. This is his, excuse me, this chapter is Ruth 3. One day, Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, should I not try to find a home for you where you will be well provided for? Is not Boaz, with whose servant girls you have been, a kinsman of ours? Meaning related. Tonight, he will be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and perfume yourself and put on your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. I will do whatever you say, Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. When Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he went over to lie down at the far end of the grain pile. Ruth approached quietly, uncovered his feet, and lay down. In the middle of the night, something startled the man, and he turned and discovered a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I am your servant Ruth, she said. Spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a kinsman redeemer. Basically, a kinsman, kinsman redeemer was someone that was a relative of her past husband. And a kinsman redeemer, the responsibility of them was to marry the widow when her husband passed away. The Lord's the Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater than that which you showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, uh, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. And my fellow townsmen, townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character. Although it is true that I am near of kin, there is a kinsman redeemer nearer than I. It was more closely, closely related to her. Stay here for the night, and in the morning, if he wants to redeem, good, let him redeem, meaning marry her. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, I will do it. Lie here until morning. So she lay at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could be recognized, and he said, Don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. He also said, Bring to me the shawl you are wearing and hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley and put it in, put it on her. Then he went back to town. When Ruth came to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, How did it go, my daughter? Then she told her everything Boaz had done for her, and added, He gave me these six measures of barley, saying, Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Then Naomi said, Wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. Okay. Make some notes here. Um, so, we see here that Ruth was being very obedient, very submissive um, to Naomi, mother-in-law, which, as we mentioned uh, yesterday, that God was really pleased and really impressed with her for doing that. And here she thought that there was a possibility that the uh, Boaz was going to be willing to be the kinsman redeemer which, not that he wasn't willing, but that he thought there was somebody that was closer uh, to the relative, that, you know, to her brother, to her, her husband who had passed away. Okay, but she didn't really know what was going to happen now, right? So he says, I'll let you know. So she's not really sure if she's going to be able to be married or not, because it was very important for a woman to be married and have a husband and have a family. So here she was waiting. Right? And kind of like pins and needles. Sometimes we want something and we're on the verge of getting something and we think it's really close and we really want to know, you know, what's holding this up. Don't we? Don't we feel like that sometimes? Um, but um, the thing is that God knows that He can't show us everything, He can't show us the complete, complete program. Because if He shows us the complete program, it would be way too much for us. We couldn't really handle it. So we've got to make sure that 
we pay careful attention to what God is showing us now and be appreciative of what He's showing us now, knowing He's going to show us the best that's yet to come. So, by His grace, He only shows us a little bit at a time. He gives us just enough light to take a step at a time. Because it's all about faith. It's all about trusting in God. Believing in God. Watching what God does. Expecting God to give you the best. You don't have to fear. There's no need to fear the next step. Because God's a loving God. He's always going to take you to a beautiful place. He's always going to prosper you if you let Him. So don't be fearful of where He takes you. Remember, the peace, I always told you this, the peace guides you into the things of God. They guide you into things of God. So there's no need to fear. The peace will give you... A, a, the peace is a, a restful, relaxing, settling joy that things are going to be okay. God will give you that peace to follow in the direction He's leading you. If you don't feel a peace, if you, if you feel a check... That some that you feel unsettled, you feel anxious, you feel something isn't right. Don't go that direction. Always follow. Always be led by the peace. God will give you the holy. You have the Holy Spirit in your heart. The Holy Spirit gives you a peace. The enemy cannot counterfeit peace. So the Holy Spirit will give you a peace, so that you'll know what you're supposed to do next. And also, God will always puts somebody in your life who has wisdom and knowledge lead you and guide you. Why? God's a loving God. It, it could be uh, your mother, your father. It could be your brother, your sister. It could be a co-worker. Somebody you got really close to. That you really admire them and honor them and you think they have a lot of wisdom and knowledge. And you think they have a, a connection with God. God can put anybody he wants to in your life that you feel is really intelligent, really sharp, and really understands God that can help lead you and guide you as you walk through this phase of your life. And we can see that in the relationship between Ruth and Naomi, Ruth trusted her mother-in-law and Naomi. She trusted her and knew that she would lead her right. She would lead her close to the things of God and teach her right. And she did. And God will honor the fact that when you listen to your to people that are wisdom, people that are knowledgeable, God honors that. You've got to stay teachable. Always got to stay teachable. You will not learn anything from God if you don't stay teachable. A, a person who's teachable is not too prideful to learn. They're always willing to learn. So you have to be willing to even have someone younger than you might have more wisdom than you in a certain area. And you had to be teachable and listen to them, even if they're younger. The Lord has shown me. I've been able to learn things from a 10-year-old child. I've been able to learn things from a 12-year-old child. But if I wasn't teachable, I would have never learned anything from them. But because the Lord showed me to be teachable, I learned that I can learn from anyone. God has great things for you. Okay, God let you go. Glad we had this time together. God loves you. God cares about you. So, whatever you do, stay teachable. God let you go. Don't forget to subscribe.